Hey guys, my name is JP, and this is my first YouTube video ever. I don't know how long or how serious I'm going to take trying to make YouTube videos, but I got a lot of exciting things going on in my life right now. Building a house, uh, just bought myself a new tractor. I got every attachment known to man for it. Got a fantastic deal on it. And I'm going to take you through my adventure of building a home, getting everything set up. I'd like to be a hobby farmer someday. I raise chickens, I hatch chickens, uh, but we got a lot of infrastructure set up here on the property. It's about 21 and a half acres. And out there past the house, we got uh, an eight acre field that we're gonna turn into a haying field. My neighbor down the street is a farmer. He's gonna let me use this hay baler. And we're gonna be running it over here with this Kubota M7060 that we got warming up right now. We're gonna start taking up the, uh, the snow off the driveway using the uh, Lamprite snowblower. So once we get this machine warmed up, We'll get you guys going. All right, guys, this is the first time I'm going to use the Lamprite snowblower. I have never done this before. I'm really not that skilled with this tractor, but hey, everyone's got to learn somewhere, and the best way to do it is just to do it. So here we go. We're going to drop the uh, Lamprite snowblower all the way down to the ground. I have my uh, rear link set to float, and we're going to push this down. There we go. All right, what that yellow button did is it just engaged my PTO. We're gonna be running this probably somewhere around uh, between 480 and 540. The Kubota M7060 has a 540E, which is an economical setting that I have set up on the, uh, the backside of my tractor. So it allows my uh, PTO and my engine to run around 1800 RPMs instead of around 2000. It's just making it a little bit more uh, economical when operating this machine. So here we go. watching our PTO speeds come right up on the screen and it seems like it's running real nice right there when I first started it felt a little bit of a vibration when I got up to around 400 plus rpms the machine really started to smooth out real quick right here we have our uh, remote valve controls so this first remote is gonna adjust the top of the chute deflector kind of moves kind of slow but not terrible the second valve right here is going to be moving left and right moves real fast nice and quick and here we go all right I'm going to drop this and on the fly shuttle Hit some rocks. Oh, pull forward. Lift this up a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. So, what I forgot to tell you is last week we had to dig a electrical trench and we had to saw cut through my driveway and we backfilled it with three quarter inch uh, process. So, that's the trench that I just hit. So, let's drop this back down. that orange button right there all four tires are locked in and we're moving pretty good Clutch. Now, this is 
a rear mounted snowblower, so of course you have to be facing backwards when you're doing it. Not the most ergonomical, but definitely the most economical. This snowblower only runs around you know, 30, 100 bucks, maybe 4,500, depending on what dealer you get or you know what kind of special price options you get. A front mounted snowblower, like you see on Wrangler Stars Yanmar, you know, requires a high flow fuel, uh, high flow uh, pump system. With that, it's it's just real big money. It'd be much more uh, efficient going forward with the machine, but that's not my price point. Nice thing about this shoot is it's super reactive, super quick. Happy I got the cab, and I you know spent the extra money, and I got the you know the froster kit on this it makes snowblowing especially when you get all the the mist and the snow blowing back onto the uh, the heated cab it melts so if you guys are going to do some snow blowing with this machine i highly suggest you get the cab and you know um, make sure you get that upgrade kit all right so as we first started off in the video we ended up hitting up this electric trench so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to wait right when i get closer i'm going to end up just lifting the uh, machine up a little bit so it's not digging so hard there we go and once we pass it, we're going to drop right back over it. Perfect. Yeah, no major issues with um, running this so far. I've only been at it for about 10 minutes, but I really like it. really happy with it. Alright guys, so we just got the end of the driveway done. Uh, can't push any snow into the road. I'm pretty sure Public Works is going to get pretty mad at me if I did so. So, what I really like about this machine is that it has a ton of power. What I was noticing, I was pushing about a four or five foot mound of snow and really had no issues with um, you know it getting clogged up or anything. So here's that trench again. We're going to lift up a little bit, just take that edge off and we're going to drop it back down, kind of cut the corner and we're gonna start heading back up the driveway. Now you might ask like, why do you have a dirt driveway? Do you have a plow driveway? And the answer is yes, I do have a plow, uh, a paved driveway. But what happened is, is that we've had so much construction work here. We took about a thousand cubic yards of fill off the property and they've been running trucks nonstop all week. And the amount of dirt, dust and debris from all the logging and uh, hauling of the dump trucks uh, really left a ton of you know dirt and sand on the, the driveway which is you know why it's a mess I mean, you can see over there that nice uh, landing strip of brown grass yeah I just peeled that up because I was about five feet off <laughs> five feet off the driveway but whatever it's not a big deal uh, no harm no foul you know I don't claim to be an expert but you know what I'm having fun this is way better than doing it by hand it's a lot easier just got back running a 30, uh, 30 inch Aaron's Deluxe snowblower and I can tell you this is much, much nicer. I'm in a nice heated cab. If I wasn't trying to make a YouTube video, I'd have some music on in the background. Well, overall, it's a fun experience. So we got a nice amount of snow coming right up the front and it's ripping. All right, so kind of finished up with the uh, snowblower for a little while and over there where that Hitachi 135 and that 220 Hitachi are sitting um, I don't know exactly what I have over there buried in the dirt I don't want to take the risk of sending a 2x4 through the auger potentially snapping a, uh, uh, a shear bolt on my PTO it's only a quarter inch 5 eight, uh, it's only a quarter inch thick 5 inch long grade a bolt that sure uh, serves as the uh, the shear bolt so again I don't really want to make uh, a mistake and damage the equipment I haven't even made my first couple payments on this machine yet so we're gonna use the bucket and we're gonna clean up some uh, parking spots for the guys so when they can uh, come to work tomorrow they have a place to park all right here we go
really happy with this uh, snowblower. It's real nice. I only have about 36 hours on this machine total ever running it, so I'm not the most you know, skilled operator when it comes to tractor operation. This is the first tractor I've ever owned. Uh, everyone says it's kind of a doozy of a tractor or machine to own because it's so large and you know for what I'm going to be using it for. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be using this tractor for. I do have you know some aspirations to you know, be a hobby farmer and you know, have fun and raise kids on the land and do all those fun things.